Tata Technologies, uh, earning slightly below what the street would have liked to see, but let's understand what the second half looks like because management is confident that H2 will bring with it some good news. Warren Harris, MD and CEO of Tata Technologies now joins in. Good morning, Warren. Uh, the last time we spoke, of course, it was mid-quarter, uh, but good to have you back on the channel. You want to walk me through how the quarter has been? There were some factors that contributed to slightly uh, below expected uh, revenue growth. Uh, there's a decline in services as well. You want to share with me what's going on and also give me a sense of uh, the sequential decline. We've seen that too for Tata Tech this quarter. What is uh, it that we should be expecting going in the second half? What led to a subdued or a somber uh, Q3, Q2? Yeah, well, uh, always good to to come back and thank you for the uh, for the opportunity of uh, of being able to uh, to profile the uh, the results of Tata Technologies. Um, just to challenge um, the comment that you made, revenue was sequentially uh, up as we had uh, we guided in uh, in the earnings call of uh, of Q1, and so we delivered against that uh, particular promise. But what we did see towards the end of the quarter was just some delayed decision making that was primarily driven by the uncertainty in and around the US election. Uh, I think the policy positions of, uh, of both sides are somewhat polarized. And so I think many of our customers uh, are looking for, uh, for clarity before uh, decisions, particularly in terms of new products are, uh, are confirmed. And I think in Europe, I think the, che the threat from China is, uh, is certainly growing. I think the competitive advantage that uh, the China Chinese OEMs have in terms of tech and in, in terms of cost are prompting some of the European OEMs to look to the regulator for uh, for some form of uh, of protection, and we expect that to come in the uh, in the early part of uh, of the next calendar year. So uh, the the headwinds that we face towards the end of the quarter, we think they're they're tactical, and that's why we guided you yesterday that we expect the second half to be better than the first which uh, which really speaks to the uh, to the underlying confidence that we have in the momentum behind the business just so uh, one quick question of course and i'll toss it over to my co-anchors uh, with the bmw jv starting in november and projected to reach a hundred million dollars run rate uh, can you give me further sort of details into the expected timeline for revenue recognition from this partnership and also with the recent deal that you won with uh, air india what is the scope of work? What are the timelines? And when will we see the impact of this on revenues? Well, we're really proud of, um, of the partnership with, um, with BMW. We begin trading um, within the JV on the 1st of November. We will have uh, 100 people in the JV that will start at that point. We expect to scale uh, the, uh, the team to over 1,000 people within the next 12 months. And as we uh, as we guided yesterday, we expect the uh, the annualized run rate of uh, of that joint venture to be over a hundred million dollars within the next uh, couple of years. You know, this is a really strategic commitment that a, that BMW is making to Tata Technologies and to India. And uh, and when they looked at partners here in India, they undertook an exhaustive search of all of the Canada organizations that are in this space and made a decision to partner with Tata Technologies, which I think was really a testament to our capabilities and to the confidence that BMW had in the values that underpin the Tata group. So we're really excited, not just about the direct business that that will provide, but also the halo effect that that will, uh, will attach to the Tata Technologies brand. You know, as far as Air India is concerned, we've been working with, uh, with Campbell Wilson and his team uh, since the Tata group acquired Air India, we've been doing a lot of work in terms of re-engineering parts for interiors to take some of the legacy aircraft and make them airworthy again. This partnership that we announced yesterday certainly reinforces the commitment of both companies, but positions Tata Technologies in support of the MRO, the maintenance, uh, repair, and overhaul investments that Air India are intending to make here in India, they are planning to stand up an MRO facility in Bangalore in the next 12 to 18 right. months, and we will be central to that particular plan. Absolutely. Hi, Warren. Good morning. Tamanna here. Just a little bit more detailing on Air India, and, and I know you've refrained from any numbers on BMW as well, so I'll try and push you on that. Uh, so, 
we have the broad idea, right? Um, redoing the interiors. Now, what is the scope of that? And any kind of revenue outlook that you can give us, uh, even in percentage terms? Well, we, uh, we don't provide uh, revenue guidance, but what I will say is that, um, you know, we are increasingly focusing on our uh, top 20, top 25 customers, and we expect Air India to be one of those uh, companies. You know, we're very proud of what the group has already done with Air India, and we think we can make an enormous contribution uh, to the flying experience of, uh, of passengers by being part of the investment that Air India is making in improving the uh, the seats and the uh, the overall cabin experience. We've got significant um, experience there in terms of uh, of the work that we've done within the aerospace industry over the next over the last ten to fifteen years, and we certainly expect to mobilise that in support of uh, of Air India and through the work that we undertake for us to scale the revenues that that represents to Tata Technologies. What's the size the of the deal? What, what is the size of the deal, Mr. Harris, with Air India? Uh, I, I, I'm not at liberty, given okay. confidentiality commitments we've made to Air India, okay. to, uh, to size the deal, but it's material for, uh, for us. And this starts flowing into second half, uh, H2. Will we see any recognition uh, yeah, in this financial see, year? We will see our business in, with Air India grow in the second half of, uh, of this year. Okay. And we certainly expect it to scale as we... Uh, as we plan for uh, for FY26. All right. So let me just come uh, in a little more detail on your numbers. Your your margins were flat this quarter, but if I look at your segments and your service segment has seen a bit of a slide in gross margins, your technology solution segment even more so. Any particular reason and do you see this correcting in Q3 and H2? We, we actually saw um, sequential uh, improvement in uh, in GP and uh, and operating margins, which I think is a testament to the uh, to the operating discipline that discipline that we've driven into the business. We've seen a, an uptick in uh, in utilization and uh, and offshoring, and we've also seen improvements in terms of our people pyramid. So I'm very pleased with the uh, the operating margin performance in the context of uh, of some uh, some headwinds that uh, that we've seen in the market related to uh, to the tapering of growth of, uh, of electric vehicles. Mm, just one uh, point that I wanted to understand from you is on Vinfast. Uh, what is the outlook there on one of your biggest clients and uh, how large is the concentration of revenue with Vinfast currently? Well, I, I think we've spoken uh, previously about the fact that, uh, that after the first quarter of this year, we uh, were out from underneath the uh, the uh, runoff that uh, that we've seen in uh, at Windfast over the last you know 12 months this time uh, last year or in Q2 of last year you know Windfast was one of our top three uh, customers and uh, and we've managed to backfill that revenue over the course of the last uh, 12 months so uh, Windfast right now is uh, is a very small part of our overall mix uh, they've celebrated the launch of the two vehicles that we've uh, we've developed for them, the VF6 and the VF7. The market has uh, has reacted very positively here in uh, in Southeast Asia, specifically um, to the two products that have been launched. And as soon as Windfast start to develop some traction in and around sales, we expect them to further invest in new product. And uh, and given the uh, the relationship that we have with that organisation we would expect to be part of their future investment and future product plans. Okay, just a, a last question, uh, Mr. Harris, since you spoke about halo effect in context of PMW, just trying to understand what is the growth you're seeing in your um, next to top five clients? Are you working on boosting the revenue share and is that where you're seeing growth coming in? Yeah, we're, we're seeing, we're seeing um, broad-based improvement after Q1. And, and so we've seen growth uh, across our anchor accounts. We've seen growth uh, across our, uh, our OEM clients, uh, both in automotive, aerospace, and industrial heavy machinery. And we're also starting to see um, significant pickup in, uh, in the tier ones. I think one of the, uh, the, the challenges that the tier ones are going through at the moment is that, um, that they are disproportionately impact, uh, impacted by the slowdown in uh, in automotive 
and the slowdown in EVs. And so they're going through a lot of supplier consolidation and a lot of investments in uh, in terms of efficiency. And so we're very much a part of that. We've won a couple of deals in the first in the second quarter in and around um, consolidating the offshore development centers that uh, that we've set up for tier ones in the past. And we're also doing a lot of work with our digital uh, proposition and specifically deploying AI in uh, in manufacturing facilities for uh, for the tier ones to drive and improve manufacturing throughput and efficiency. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Harris. Always a pleasure to speak with you, Tata Tech, there on the quarter gone by. And um, uh, the Air India deal seems like it's an exciting one. I think the one big takeaway clearly is that they will see revenue recognition in the second half of the financial year from the deal for Air India.